OK, back to defence now. Joining us is uh, Shadow Defence Minister Andrew Hasty. Andrew, good to see you. Thanks for your time this morning. So uh, you might have just heard, and I'm sure you know anyway, figures out this morning show the government committing $4 billion to acquire more long-range strike systems and manufacture longer-range munitions here in Australia. We'll start off with your response to that announcement today. Well, good morning to you, uh, Pete. Yes, the government has promised a lot with this DSR, um, but what we're seeing is, is no new money. We're seeing cost shifting and we're seeing cannibalisation of army capability. So um, we're also seeing a review that will add an additional 12 months to this whole process. Uh, to, the Guided Weapons Explosive Ordnance Review won't report until Q2 of next year. Uh, and if our strategic circumstances are as challenging as the government says they are, and we think they are, well, then we, we haven't a day to lose. And so we need speed, we need urgency, and we need delivery. Well, I was trying to seek some time, some, some more precise time frames from the Minister this morning. I, I didn't get it, though. Uh, so just to break up uh, that first question into two parts. So Richard Miles expecting the first locally manufactured weapon to be out in the field within a couple of years. When you're starting from scratch, is that fast enough? Well, I would have thought if, if this is a whole of government and whole of nation challenge, as Sir Angus Houston and Stephen Smith said, then there's not a moment to lose and we need to move faster. And adding another 12 months to this whole process before we even work out what sort of missile we're going to go with um, just delays things and it's, it's not good enough. So we're calling as the opposition for greater urgency from this government and more funding, because at the moment, what they're doing is they're cost shifting within the existing defence budget and they're cannibalising capability by taking important capability in the form of infantry fighting vehicles from uh, the army and they're shifting it into uh, programs like this, which is important. But if, if the situation is what it is, well, we need to uplift across the board and increase defence spending. If we know what sort of missile we need, why not just go with it? Would that be your view? Yeah, I think that's also true. Uh, we also want sovereign missiles. And, and again, the Defence Strategic Review is cut from the same quarry uh, as the Defence Strategic Update and Force Structure Plan of 2020. There's a lot of symmetry between them. And even back then, we were talking about sovereign missile capabilities. So uh, it's good the government's continuing on with this, and we need to be able to manufacture things in this country. But also, we need to uh, deliver capability, uh, particularly if the, if the circumstances are what they say they are. OK, I mean, if, we, if we've known what we've needed since, as you point out there, 2020, should, should your former government have moved faster and pulled the trigger, so to speak, on them? Well, we did, we did move. Uh, we did introduce the defence strategic update and update the Australian people on the challenges that we're facing. Uh, the four structure plan was put in place. We struck AUKUS. The, the reality is the reason why there's symmetry here is because the CDF and the Secretary of Defence served the former coalition government and Richard Miles as Minister for Defence appointed them for another term. So you'd, you'd expect there to be symmetry. Now, that's not a political point. That's just a reality. So in many respects, there's continuity in the defence strategic review. What we're not seeing is increased funding, which I think is is really, really important. Instead, we're seeing cannibalisation and cuts to capability. Just on that second uh, point that I referred to earlier, there's been no time frame as well, or a little vague on it, uh, Richard Mars was this morning, on exactly when long-range strike weapons, including HIMARS, will be here, though. Would you expect there to be even more delays on that, given how slowly things tend to work in defence? Well, that's a great question, Pete. There's, there's a lot of things in this report that, that we agree with. Um, capability acquisition needs to move faster. Uh, we have workforce challenges. Uh, and both those things are going to feed into more delays if they're not fixed. And so we'll be holding the minister to account and we'll be pushing him hard to make sure that he drives the department and defence to deliver these capabilities as quickly as possible. Uh, the whole system needs a shake up. This is not business as usual which again comes back to my point. If it's not business as usual, we expected to see uh, increased funding to defence. It's only at 2.2% now. Uh, you've had Labor luminaries like Kim Beasley say it needs to go higher. I think Kim is right. We've got to work out a way to do that. And that's on the government to sort out. Just an observation, Andrew, you've got a lot of books behind you. Have you read all of those? I have not read all those books. Um, I'm trying to impress you this morning, Pete. Uh, that's... <laughs> but is, that, is, that your, is that your own library in your own home? It is my own library. I, I must <laughs> prefer paper and um, Google will get you so far, but it's always handy to have books behind you to reach for, for speeches yeah. or 
preparation like this. I can Whenever you need it. All right. Thanks, Bruce. I need to see you, Pete. Yeah. Thank you, mate. Andrew Hastie, the Shadow Defence Minister. Appreciate your time.